If you want a basic laptop that ticks all the boxes, doesn't have major issues, has AMD's powerful new CPU, is very configurable and has great battery life, then this video is for you. The ThinkPad T-Series is one of the most famous laptop lines of all time. They have been a dominant force worldwide for decades. The T-Series in particular has the reputation of performance, balance with quality and insanely good keyboards. If you're lucky enough to get one from your employer, you're doing well. Seriously guys, I owned a T-Series back in 2005 when ThinkPads were still produced by IBM. It was a great laptop then, and it's still a great laptop. So the moment I heard that Lenovo was coming out with a ThinkPad with AMD's incredible new Ryzen 4000 processors, and it would be the T-Series, I ordered one immediately. Seriously, we have been waiting for higher end laptops to move from Intel to AMD for too long now. And although the T-Series is not the highest end ThinkPad that's out there, that's reserved for the X-Series, it's certainly a top tier laptop. I value your time, so I'm just going to cut to the chase. This is a really good laptop for casual users on the go as it has excellent battery life or a programmer looking for powerful hardware with options for plenty of RAM. However, if you want to do AAA gaming, photo or video editing, or are looking for a laptop to match your interior design, this is not for you. By the way, I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you've watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. All right, just an FYI on the ThinkPad T14S. It weighs 2.9 pounds, sits in between the X1 Carbon, which is smaller and lighter at 2.6 pounds, and the T14, which is larger and heavier, starting at around 3.2 pounds. I personally chose the T14S as I felt the T14 would be too heavy and bulky for a 14-inch device, and that this would be a good middle ground. That being said, the T14 does have two cooling fans where this laptop has one, so keep that in mind when we talk about temperatures later in the video. The model I have here has the Ryzen 7 4750U processor with 8 cores and 16 threads, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. Let's get straight into performance. In Geekbench, we see that this laptop is best in class, way above Intel-based laptops for multi-core, including the new 10th Gen MacBook Pro, the Dell XPS 13 9300 and the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Turning to Cinebench R20, which maxes out the CPU, it was a thrashing, with this laptop annihilating the competition, with the exception of my IdeaPad 514, which has a similar CPU. However, that laptop has an 8-core, eight 8-thread eight processor, where this one has a 16-thread processor, so I would have expected it to beat out the IdeaPad 514 as well. I did question whether CPU temperatures are preventing it running faster, but when we look at them, they are superb. My CPU maxed out at 78 Celsius, way cooler than Intel-based CPUs, which often hit close to 100. So from that perspective, you probably don't need to get the T14 model with two fans rather than this lighter T14S, as its single fan is able to cool the CPU. When we turn to look at PowerDraw, we can see why this processor with its extra eight threads doesn't beat the 4700U in the IdeaPad 514. It draws less power. This is actually a good thing in my opinion. The performance is already phenomenal on this machine, and lower power draw results in less heat and increased battery life, which we'll talk about later. Chassis temperatures on the palm rest and keyboard deck are always nice and cool. That being said, it does get very warm towards the right side of the laptop. The exhaust vent for the fan is there. I prefer laptops that exhaust hot air out the back, not the side. I find laptops with this cooling design are more noticeably warm as the exhaust is closer to you. But although the warmth of this chassis in this area is definitely noticeable, I didn't find it uncomfortable, and I am sensitive to this. Fan noise isn't the best. When under light loads, the fans always run, but they are barely audible. When under heavy load, the fans don't get overly loud. However, they are high pitched, which makes them quite noticeable in a quiet room. For lightweight tasks though, like using Microsoft Office, the laptop is quiet enough. I didn't notice any coil whine in my unit. The laptop comes with a decently fast SSD and RAM is in dual channel mode, which is good. It also comes with Wi-Fi 6. For real world applications like starting the laptop, opening a Word doc, the laptop performed very well. Same goes for coding tasks like opening the integrated development environment IntelliJ and compiling and debugging an application server. That being said, for some reason it lagged behind importing a large database in MySQL, which surprised me as both the CPU and SSD performance is very good. So that is quite odd, and I can't explain it. When it comes to video editing in Premiere Pro, just like all Ryzen laptops without dedicated graphics, it's way too slow. Tons of people have mentioned that Premiere Pro has been optimized to work on AMD chips. Let me tell you, that is hogswallop. 
I have the latest version with the latest AMD drivers installed and as of this video in August 2020, it has not. I heard that DaVinci Resolve may run better on Ryzen's integrated graphics, so get subbed as I plan to give that a try in future videos. Audio latency is excellent by the way, for those who need to know that. I had a really good time playing League of Legends on the laptop, it hit 120 frames per second on high graphics at 1920 resolution, which is very good. That being said, this laptop will not be able to handle AAA titles. Its internal graphics are just not powerful enough for that. So for casual gamers, this has you well covered, but serious gamers, this isn't your laptop. The display on my model is a 300 nit Full HD panel with poor color reproduction. That being said, you can configure it with higher end panels, including a 400 nit and 500 nit one. I do wish I had one of the higher end panels to test to see if their colors are any better, but I don't unfortunately. I also wish they offered it with a 2K resolution panel. Not 4K, we don't need 4K in a laptop this size, but 2K would have made the fonts nice and crisp. Anyway, the display had no dead pixels or backlight bleed, which is good. The display is also a touchscreen and has a matte panel, which I like. Because it's not reflective, it helps make the most of the 300 nits of brightness and is usable in a brightly lit room. This is a quality feeling laptop, but not at the level of Apple's MacBook Pro. The large bezels though do make this laptop look very dated. That being said, when you're using it, you don't tend to notice them. The laptop can't be opened with one hand, which I found out the hard way. There are no sharp edges and the back of the laptop is very easy to open with only five screws. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered, but the SSD can be upgraded. In terms of chassis size, here it is compared to the incredible IdeaPad 515 and the Dell XPS 13 9300. The port choices are pretty good, two USB-C and two USB-A. Unfortunately, no Thunderbolt on these AMD laptops though, which is a pity because a laptop like this with a very powerful CPU could gain a lot by adding an external graphics card for those wanting to do video editing or gaming. The trackpad is great on this laptop, very accurate. It seems bigger than the one on the X1 Carbon, which I found a little cramped, so that is a plus. The keyboard is phenomenal. It's hard to verbalize how good it is. If Apple owns the trackpad category, ThinkPads own the keyboard category. That being said, I don't like Lenovo's default layout where the function and control key are swapped. However, you can easily swap them in the BIOS. Speakers are really good for a laptop like this. They get very loud. That being said, they don't have much bass, plus they are downward facing so you'll lose some volume if you have the laptop on a blanket. That being said, the volume gets so loud that I don't see even that being an issue. Battery life and performance while on battery is just awesome, and it really does make the most of its 57 watt hour battery. I have seen 10 plus hours remaining even after I've used 20% of the battery. Sorry that I didn't take a shot at that, but here is another example. As I discussed earlier, this Ryzen CPU just doesn't draw a lot of power, which is probably a major contributor to its great battery life. I wish I knew how long the battery life is on the upgraded model with the 400 nit low power screen. By default, if you unplug the power cable, the screen's brightness dims to 100 nits and the performance slider in Windows shifts to battery mode, capping the CPU's performance at 1.4 gigahertz, drawing a max of 10 watts. But, and this is pretty cool, you can change the performance slider back to best performance to get the full processing power while on battery, which is pretty rare for PC laptops. Please note, by default, you won't be able to raise the brightness back from 100 nits after unplugging it, even if you plug it back in. This can easily be solved by opening the AMD Radeon software and turning off very bright. Once I restarted the computer, this issue went away. The laptop does support both Windows Hello and my unit has a fingerprint reader as well. The webcam is the usual awful one. However, better quality webcams that just came out in the new iMac 27 for 2020 will hopefully make their way to laptops soon. Mine did have a privacy filter though, which is good. The laptop was very stable in my testing and didn't crash once. I do like that Lenovo offers a range of options to add extended warranties, including next day on-site servicing in many locations and accident protection. Price-wise, Lenovo's website can be tough here. Prices seem to fluctuate frequently, with heavy discounts often being offered. At the time I made this video, the six core 12 thread model with eight gig of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and a 300 nit screen goes for about 1,250. And for eight core 16 thread, 16 gig of RAM model with 512 gig SSD and a bright 400 nit screen, you're looking at around $1,650. All those prices are US by the way. It is nice to see an option to upgrade to 32 gig of RAM, especially as the RAM is soldered, but it is pricey compared to what one would have been able to purchase it for if it was user upgradable. So enough said, who is this laptop for and would I personally buy it? So far, this is a rather unique laptop. It's the first portable somewhat premium Ryzen 4000 laptop that I've tested. And this means that this laptop doesn't suffer from any of the major drawbacks of other Ryzen 4000 laptops that I've used.
For example, the Redmi Book lacks a webcam and backlit keyboard. The Asus ZenBook, you can't make out the backlit keyboard on their light coloured models. The G14 is louder and also suffers from the hard to read backlit keyboard on their lighter coloured model. And the IdeaPads 5 14 and 15 do not feel as premium, their fans are louder, they don't have the array of upgrade options, and to my eyes, their screens look a little worse. In the price range, the devices I think it really competes with is Lenovo's own ThinkPad X1 Carbon, which this laptop clearly outperforms, the Dell XPS 9300, which it also outperforms and runs cooler than, the Spectre X360, which it also outperforms, and the MacBook Pro 13, which again, it outperforms and does have a more comfortable keyboard. The main drawback is it doesn't have options for a higher resolution, more color accurate panel like the Mac's phenomenal Retina display or the Spectre's OLED display. With that in mind, I feel this laptop is a really good option for casual users and programmers who don't mind a full HD screen rather than a high resolution one. In fact, I'm going to go as far as saying right now it's an excellent option for programmers. It's insanely powerful, has the best keyboard, can be spec'd up to 32 gig of RAM, it's lightweight, has a good enough screen and has great battery life. Its only really downside is the high pitched sound the fans make when under load, but most programmers I know code with music playing anyway. For me personally, I really love high resolution displays and I do some photo editing, so I'd probably go for the MacBook Pro 13 10th gen and sacrifice some power, but it would be a tough call between them, especially if this is my only machine, as the raw power of this laptop is hard to ignore. Anyway folks, that's all for today. If you like this video and want to support the channel, which I know you do, please become a Patreon member, link in the description below. And of course, smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. Until next time, I will see you later.